والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to mercy to mankind sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam One of the great events that preceded the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the event of the elephant and this has nothing to do with uh, uh, the Chinese calendar where they have the year of the mouse the year of the monkey the year of the elephant though this was named after the event of the elephant and it's a well-known fact to Muslims that the Prophet Sallallahu was born in the year of the elephant and this has a story of its own. You see, people were going to Mecca in pilgrimage. And a lot of the people outside Mecca were not happy with this. The Christians, the Jews, uh, even the Persians, they were not happy of how sacred Mecca was and of the religious power that it had over different tribes scattered in Arabia. Actually, actually they, were, they were envious. They were extremely envious. Yeah. But again, they were not happy. And it's the same thing nowadays. Now, you have the superpowers not happy of the great and widespread of Islam. They are, in, ca uh, in fact, they are worried of the widespread of Islam. The minute they say that they see their citizens reverting to Islam, being committed to uh, wearing the Islamic dress, the women are covered, uh, men are not uh, drinking intoxicants, not fornicating, not gambling, they're serious, they are effective, they are uh, doing their jobs uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the optimum. This worries people. When you have serious people, productive people, people that are enjoying their lives within the limitation of Islam, this worries people. So, it's the same thing happening on and on again. And that is why Abraha, who was the governor of the Yemen region, and Yemen region was controlled by so many people, the Romans, the Persians, and at that time, the Abyssinian uh, 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 kingdom ruled it and Abraha was made the governor of Yemen. Abraha, who was filthy rich, thought of doing something to distract people from going to Kaaba, to Mecca, for pilgrimage. So he thought that I'm going to build this huge church with beautiful buildings and ornaments and put lots of nice things to attract the poor peasants of Arabia, those who did not see such huge buildings before. I'm going to make it a monument that everybody performs pilgrimage to. And he spent so much in doing that. He spent a, f a fortune. And he dedicated his time and the time of his people to do this beautiful monument and he did so and he started calling people spreading the news that now you can perform pilgrimage to this beautiful building unfortunately one of the Arabs who did not like people diverting 
pilgrims from Kaaba, from Mecca, to this newly built... Unknown. Yeah, is, what is it? Now, the Kaaba goes back to Abraham. And you're talking about 2,000, 3,000, Allah knows how long, years. Because Abraham is the father of all messengers and prophets. Yes. As we know, Abraham had two sons. He had Isaac and, Isaac Ishmael. and Ishmael. Of course, Ishmael is, is the eldest, and Isaac is uh, uh, the other uh, uh, son. From Ishmael came all the prophets and messengers of the Jews, the sons of Israel. And by the way, what, do you know what Israel is? Jacob. It's the name of the messenger, the prophet Jacob. Jacob. And the Prophet wasallam, our prophet, was asked yeah. once, who is the most noblest of people? So he said, Joseph, the son of Jacob, Jacob. the son of Isaac, Isaac. the, the, son, the of son of Abraham. So they're all four prophets, you know, uh, uh, one after the other. <clears throat> so it's, it's a noble uh, 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 offspring. Now, we had, uh, Abraham, as, as uh, mentioned earlier, had two sons. He had Ishmael and he had Isaac. Isaac. And all the, the Abraham was the father of all prophets. So he came 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years ago and he built this uh, house of Allah. He built this Kaaba that people performed pilgrimage to from all uh, uh, the other neighboring um, places from Arabia. This Arab did not like the story of a church coming in and taking the place of Kaaba. So he went in the middle of the night and he put filth all over the walls of it. And he left. So the following day, once they saw this act, Abraha was furious. And he knew that an Arab did this. So he decided to attack Mecca and destroy, demolish Kaaba to the ground. Now, just before we go on, it is important to say that what the Arab did was wrong. Two wrongs never make a right. Terrorist attacks, harming people, doing things without referring to the Quran and Sunnah cause more harm than good. And that is why in the Holy Quran, Allah tells us, do not curse, do not swear at the idols that the pagans worship. Why is that? It's, to us, it sounds like a legitimate thing to do. These idols do not bring us any benefit and do not deter any harm from us. So why do we worship them? We can curse them, we can slander them, we can abuse them, we can do whatever we want. Or see Allah. that in turn they may curse Allah. Yeah, this is why, this is the, 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 the completion of the first. Allah tells us, do not curse or do not swear at the idols that are, are being worshipped uh, uh, other than Allah, so that the worshippers would not curse Allah, our Lord would not do more harm than good. And this is a very, very, very important ro uh, rule in Islam. Islam was made on and based on completing the advantages and gaining it. And it was based also on preventing the harm and reducing it as much as possible. So whatever, before you do anything, you have to weigh the pros and cons. You have to weigh the advantages and disadvantages so that you know whether I should proceed or not. So whatever that Arab did, though his intention was pure, his action was wrong and unacceptable. Of course, he was a, a, a pagan. So it, this is beside the point. He was not a Muslim to begin with. But nowadays, any Muslim, before doing any similar thing, you have to think not twice more than that. This is unacceptable. It is not acceptable for us as Muslims to go and put filth in the Vatican, for example, as we do not ex uh, accept others to come into our ma mosques and put filth in it. We do not abuse or insult 
their Bibles because we do not accept them insulting and abusing our Holy Quran and so on. Good, good intentions are not enough or an excuse to do bad things. Yes. At all. In Islam, you have to have two conditions for any action to be accepted by Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, the first is you have to be sincere. Meaning that this action, you're doing it for the sake of Allah. So this is an intention. The second condition that this action you're doing, it has to be in line with the Quran and with the Sunnah. But if it's an innovated one, then this is unacceptable. And I give a simple example for that. A person who wants to pray, but he's praying for his boss. The action is okay. It's not innovated, but the intention is not accepted yeah, because it's not for Allah. Mm -hmm. So the whole action is void. Yes. A person who prays to the sake of, for the sake of Allah, the intention is well, but he is praying an innovated prayer comprised of uh, uh, 20 rak'ahs in, in, in a row with one prostration instead of two in each rak'ah. Then this is completely unacceptable in its void. Going back to the story of Abraha, Abraha ordered his men to formulate uh, an army for him. And they gathered 60,000 warriors. Now the number is huge because the people of Mecca would not exceed uh, two or three thousand at most. Give or take a couple of thousand, give them five thousand. To come with 60,000 soldiers, that was really huge. 60,000 or 6,000? Uh, some books say 60, some books say all, 60. All of them on elephants? No, 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 no. They were not uh, uh, riding elephants. They were 60,000 in number, but they had 13 elephants with them. Mm. So imagine the people of Arabia, the largest animal they, they, they had encountered was a camel. Mm. And now you bring them 13 elephants, elephants okay. with their armor. And with their hu if you see an elephant, this thing is big, you know, it's, 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 it's huge. And with the armor, with the shields, with everything uh, uh, equipped to kill, and he marched to Mecca. And whenever he passed a village, he conquered it. And either demolished it or took from them what he wanted and, and looted it. Until he reached the outskirts of Mecca. Now, through that event, the people of Mecca heard about this. And they, didn't, they, they could not do anything to resist. They did not have an army. They did not have anyone to defend. And the people, the villages and the, and the Arabs between Yemen and Mecca, they were trying to defend the Kaaba. They were trying to... to protect it by standing in the face of the army of Abraha. But he annihilated whoever but, stood in his way. But, Sheikh, you said they, are bra they were brave, courageous. And, uh, and they died doing so because yes. they did not have the power themselves. to uh, 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 protect the Kaaba. I think that we have a, a short break. Uh, so be with us and inshallah we will be right back. So we see there is no forcing or compulsion in any part of the deen. So if you say forced marriage in Islam, it doesn't exist. Islam is offering what's called a mizan. The, there's a balance. There is a balance between punishment and reward. Now, what's very interesting, the psychiatrists tell us that the human being's makeup in the brain works off of two stimuli. There are only two reasons why a human being does anything. That's either for a hope of a reward or the fear of a loss. Mm -hmm. 
Salam alaikum and welcome back. The army of Abraha was marching and sweeping all that stood in front of him to defend the holy shrines, to defend Kaaba and Mecca. When Abraha was just out the skirts of Mecca, they found a herd of camel and they took it as they loot whatever they find. So, Abdul Muttalib, who was the owner of that herd, went to meet Abraha. And he asked for permission to meet the king. And he was admitted to the king. Abraha, the moment he saw Abdul Muttalib, had this fear in him and respect. Because Abdul Muttalib was an honorable old man, and he looked like a wise and a leader of his tribe. So he respected him greatly. Abdul Muttalib sought the permission to speak. And he was given that permission. So he said, O king, I'd like to request from you to give me back what you have taken, what your men have taken from me. And there are uh, a number so and so of camels that look in this uh, uh, fashion and they had uh, these special things into them. Abraha looked down at Abdul Muttalib and said and told him that the minute you walked in I had great respect for you because I thought that you were a leader of your tribe. I am coming to demolish the house of Allah that you've been worshipping or you uh, facing in worship, I'm coming to destroy this. And all what you care about are a number of, of camels of, of your own. What kind of man are you? Abdul Muttalib was clear and blunt. He told him, I am the owner of the camels yes. and they uh, uh, are my possessions they, they are the things that my I property. my property that, that the things that I own mm -hmm. and I am in, in charge uh, of protecting it the house you're headed to has a, a, a rub has a lord has an owner and he Protected. will protect it yeah. so Abraham did not pay any attention to what Abdul Muttalib said he ordered his men give him back his camels Abdul Muttalib and all the people of Mecca went to the top of the mountains surrounding Mecca because they, they, they have abandoned uh, 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 Mecca and the Kaaba and they started, Oh Allah, oh Allah, they started praying, Oh Allah, protect your house, protect your house. And they left. They've abandoned Mecca completely. No one was left in Mecca. Abraha started to march towards Mecca to destroy and demolish this house that people go to perform Hajj to. The minute they went to an area near Mecca which is about five or ten kilometers away, the camel sat down on its four feet and refused to move. The elephant. That, elephant? That's, uh, excuse me, uh, the, the elephant. That is well. I, th I still think this small. Camel too big. The camel. Uh, the, the, again, the elephant just sat down on its four legs. It refused to move, and all the riders, all the the soldiers, tried to, you know, ask this elephant to stand up. It would not. They started stabbing him with their spears so that it would feel the pain and. Stand up, the elephant refused to move, not even one inch. So they redirected him away from Mecca, left, right, and backwards. And he went as quick as it can uh, go and move. And the minute they directed it to Mecca, it just sat down. So this by itself was an astonishment. They tried and tried, and it, they could not... Yes. Fa they failed. They could not do this. And Abraha was furious. Yet he did not know that this was only the beginning. To their 
surprise, they saw the, the skies filled with small birds that covered the sky and blocked the sun. The scene was nice, but it was scary. And to their surprise again, they found that these birds had three stones made of clay. One in their mouths and one at each claw, yes. and at each hand or leg or whatever. And they flew over them throwing these bombs at Abraha and the soldiers. And what, whomever it touched, it ripped and cut a limb of those soldiers. And in seconds, it was a matter of seconds, the whole army was defeated and it was bodies all over the place. Immediately, the remaining of, of, of the army fled the scene and went back to Yemen defeated. The people of Mecca came down from the mountains, went to the Kaaba, praised Allah the Almighty and thanked Him for what uh, uh, He did by protecting their sacred shrines, by protecting these holy shrines of Kaaba and the area of Mecca. Of course, this event by itself boosted the reputation of Mecca and of, of Al-Haram, the it's Kaaba. The holy, yes, the and, and everyone heard about this, knew that this was a sacred city, that this was the holy shrines that Allah Himself has protected from being attacked. This meant that the people knew that something's going to happen. And this is inevitable. And they knew that it was the time, if Allah Azza wa Jal sent someone, then it would be the appropriate time because Allah will not leave the people going astray. And this again, great event, preceded the birth of the Prophet ﷺ. Actually, the Prophet was born in the very year of this uh, invasion of Kaaba or the invasion to be. We also have to uh, uh, bear in mind that the Prophet ﷺ, though he was born in this particular year, people around Mecca were eager for a savior, for a light at the end of the tunnel. People were not satisfied with the way they were living. They knew that there was something wrong. And this chaos, this mayhap they have been living in without any government, without any leader that leads them, without a, a, a specific morals or ethics, something to prevent these wars from taking place every now and then. Scattered everywhere, struggling with each other. And, uh, In, indeed. Many bad habits. It's not only bad habits, it was lethal. People died because of this. There was a lot of injustice. And in the hadith of Abi Dhar, Abu Dhar used to tell us about himself, may Allah be pleased with him, that he used to do things in the daytime until he was dead tired and then just sleep as a piece of cloth until the sun came back up again. He had no reason to live and the people of the time did not have any reason to live either. It was very easy for them to die. They could indulge themselves in battle and some people would call this bravery and some people would call this carelessness. They would indulge themselves in battle, in feuds, in uh, uh, contests that they are sure one of them is going to die and they could care less. They would call and consider this to be <coughs> bravery and they're ready to, the, to do this on and on again without any fear of dying. So the time was set for something of importance to happen. This was the time when the Prophet ﷺ was born. Now, you remember that we said that the father of our Prophet's name was? 
Abdullah. Abdullah. Abdullah was one of the favorite sons of Abdul Muttalib. Muttalib. And he chose a fine woman for him. He chose Amina bint mm -hmm. Wahab to be his lawful wife. And if you recall, we said earlier that fornication was widely spread yes. among the Arabs. Yet, the Prophet wasallam is the offspring of legitimate marriages. No fornication in his mm -hmm. ancestors at all. He said, may Allah uh, 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 exalt his mention, that from the sons of Ishmael, Allah has chosen Kinana. And from Kinana, Allah has chosen Quraysh. And from Quraysh, Allah has chosen the sons of Hashem. And Allah Almighty has chosen me from all the sons of Hashem. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, also that all his ancestors were married. And there is no adultery or fornication in all the way up to Abraham. It's all pure marriage, legitimate, no fornication. And in one instance, although uh, 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 fornication was widely spread among the Arabs before Islam, Hind bint Utbah, who was one of the greatest enemies of Islam, the wife of Abu Sufyan, Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, she said when she went to uh, 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 make bay'ah to the Prophet ﷺ, uh, 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 he told her that women must not fornicate and commit adultery. So she immediately asked the Prophet, and does a free woman, does an honorable free, not slave, free woman commit adultery? Which meant that those who were noble, those who had a noble descent and were, were, were free would not commit adultery. But the others and who were to be the majority committed this without any uh, uh, restriction. I'm afraid that this is all the time we have for today's program. So insha'Allah until we meet next time. Fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm-hmm.